Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Hope you're doing great. Today we're going to talk about upstrums. It's something that I get asked about by a lot of beginners. They're nowhere near as difficult as people think. In fact, they're just as easy as doing a downstrum. But because probably in the journey thus far you've mostly been doing downstrums, the first time you try and do an upstrum might feel just a bit pe peculiar because you haven't done it before. But don't be scared. By the end of this lesson, you're going to feel a lot more confident about the idea of making an upstrum as well. Now, I want to emphasize here the importance of having a thin pick. Okay, I'm using this Jim Dunlop nylon. It's a uh, 0.38 millimeters. It's, it's like a piece of paper or cardboard. You could probably get away with using a piece of cardboard if you shaped it like a pick or, or just get yourself a really thin pick. Um, it really makes a difference. Uh, in the week three of my left-handed study, I only had a thick pick. I didn't have a thin pick and it really made strumming very, very difficult. I really didn't enjoy it at all. So make sure you found yourself a thin pick before you get going with using your upstrokes. It makes a big difference. So the first thing to realize when we're going to get into upstrokes is that they come in between downstrokes. Sounds pretty obvious, right? So the downstrums are one, two, three, four and then we've got one and two and three and four and now if you're doing four down strums before you were already doing upstrokes in between you just weren't strumming the strings okay so first thing to realize just use your fingers to mute all of the strings so you're not even going to make a sound if you do touch the strings but we're going to start by not touching the strings even so just using your hand getting used to the feeling of one and two and three and four and down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. One and two and three and four and down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. You want to practice doing that. If you think that that might be a struggle, pause this video now and just have a little bit of a run through. And make sure that you can get that feeling where your hand is moving quite relaxed up and down or down and up. Now we're going to move it on to playing the guitar and the first thing I want you to do is I want you to try and strum all of the strings each time. Okay, so just going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and count along with it as you're doing it. It's a really good idea. Might feel a little bit silly in the early stages, but just one and two and three and four and getting used to the count, getting used to the movement, solidifying in your body and in your mind. One and two and three and four and this relationship between the one, two, three and the four and the down motion and the and and the up motion something that you really want to build a strong relationship with. Particularly, you should be tapping your foot as well. I wasn't tapping my foot then, but you should be tapping your foot with the one, two, three, and the four as well. Okay, all of those things combined are going to make a big difference. Now, the reality of it is, when you're doing an upstrum, it's usually just the thinnest three or four strings. The downstrum will lead you kind of in toward the body of the guitar, and the upstrum moves slightly away. It's very rare that you strum all of the strings with an upstrum. You can choose to do it. So I will sometimes choose to strum all of the strings, but as a kind of general principle for beginners, you want to think that an upstroke is just going to be the thinnest few strings, the th thinnest three or four strings, not all of them. So being aware of that now, I want you to try the same thing again and just go down, up. But with the upstroke, you're kind of coming slightly away from the guitar. Okay, if I try and line it up, so down, in, and then up. You're kind of coming away a little bit. Not, not like out, right? We're not going silly. Just a little bit away. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Four and so I'm not really on on the upstroke. I'm definitely not hitting the thickest two strings at all. They're not getting touched at the moment. Now at this speed, when it's very very slow and I'm kind of concentrating, it might feel not quite natural. But I can promise you that's what's going to happen when you two and three and four and one and two and 
three and four and I think understanding that the up strum is usually only going to strum the thinnest few strings can be a really helpful thing. It's a whole heap of worry that you don't have to have that oh, I'm not strumming all of the strings. Okay, particularly the thicker strings. For a lot of the chords that we're playing, we don't want to strum the thicker strings anyway. For a D minor chord or an A minor chord, we don't want to play the thicker string any anyway. So if you're doing an upper strung, to be able to kind of strum up and then get away on the fifth string, say, for an A minor chord, to strum up and then not the thicker string. I mean, who can do that? I can't do that. That would be like really, really impossible. So that's part of the reason why just strumming on the thinner strings works really well. The other thing is that actually it sounds better. So when you strum all of the strings, it doesn't quite have the same swing as is all again. Is just the ups. Sorry, just the, the thinner strings on the up. It just it sounds better when the up strum is just focused on the thinnest few strings. So make sure you bear that in mind while we check out the following strumming patterns that incorporate the up strum. 